Hey, what's up, sports fans? Anthony with Bleacher Bums Gaming. And first of all, a, uh, wishing everyone a very Merry Christmas. I uh, wanted to do a quick video today on some development uh, updates with Glory Days Baseball. And, and again, the game is still a long ways off, lots of testing and rating to do. But I uh, wanted to go over uh, refinement in the range slash error process, as well as discuss um, the fatigue, the pitcher fatigue, which has now been added to the game. And then also to uh, kind of throw out an alternate card design that I've been looking at uh, for uh, comments, feedback, um, and, and kind of discuss the uh, pros and cons between the two uh, card designs. So first of all, uh, with the charts, and again, the the whole purpose or goal of this game mission statement, if you will, is to have as much as possible of the gameplay come off these cards. And that being said, uh, there are two, only two charts that come into play. Uh, one is the runner advancement and the double play chart, which you can see here. Um, this has runner advancement on singles, doubles, different fields, as well as, um, and actually the double play comes off the uh, batter's card. So, Hits to uh, various fields, single and double runner advancement, where bunts go, hit and run adjustments, and infield adjustments for double play. Uh, weather chart, which would uh, be used if a uh, event came up that called for weather chart. And then the injury chart, if you are playing that uh, with injuries. Uh, the second chart would be the um, error and range check chart. And this is where some modifications were made to the game. Uh, yeah, Matt and Robert, welcome very much, my friends. So the modifications I made to the, um, and hope you guys are all doing well on this Christmas Eve. Uh, the modifications I made to the um, event, or I'm sorry, the error and range charts is I changed the uh, ratings on the players cards to uh, be 1D20 based to try and even capture these or uh, incorporate uh, these charts so that a single role can determine error and range checks and the result as well. So the way you can do it, you can do it one of two ways, which we'll get to when we demonstrate it. Um, the 1D20 with that you roll with the other dice, if an error check or range check comes up, you would reference the 1D20 against the fielder's range rating that you're uh, looking at and then go straight to this chart with the same number to tell you the result, whether it was a successful or unsuccessful range error check. And doing that, uh, the results are a little more linear, but again, the descriptions here are mostly for color in the game and the results really are the same. Uh, if you want a variation in the, uh, I guess, commentary that comes with the failed or successful check, you could roll the 1D20 again and check the error chart. So it's flexibility there to use uh, both ways. If you want to do just one dice roll, awesome. If you want to do a second to uh, get a more varied result, you can do that as well. So that's the main change there. And then, of course, the third chart is the rare event chart or event chart. And this is uh, this is not the finalized one. This is... Uh, the one in my hand is still uh, 2D10 base, so I have to modify that to fit uh, one die six and one uh, D10 base. So, but that's it in terms of the charts, and that is not going to change as development of the game proceeds. And again, the uh, hope and purpose is to get as much of the game off the cards, off the uh, pitcher and batter's cards as possible. Uh, what has been added since the last development video is uh, the fatigue system for the pitcher. So uh, pitchers are rated, and again, this is the 1914 uh, Miracle Braves and Philadelphia Athletics. And pitcher fatigue is based on number of batters faced in either a starting or relief role. Uh, Dick Rudolph was a horse. He completed, um, I think, every game except six that he started in 1914. So he's going to have a higher uh, fatigue rating. And then when he did come in relief, he also uh, was in long relief. So the way the fatigue works, uh, once you exceed this number of batters faced, 
you'll see down here on the batter's cards, there are shaded um, columns in, or shaded results in uh, columns five and six. Uh, if you roll one of these instead of the result here resulting in a strikeout or an out, you would go up here to the tired bar on the batter's card and a ground out would translate into a single all runners advance maximum number of bases and a fly out would translate into a double runner's advanced maximum number of bases. A strikeout would become a walk. So that would affect a few results here on both the pitcher and the uh, batter's card. Same thing on the pitcher's card. If you get the shaded result, you will check the tired bar on the batter's card for the new result. And you can see, and, and this is the alternate card design. I'll talk about that more later. But you can see this is Aaron Judge. A fly out on his card if the pitcher is fatigued or on the pitcher's card becomes a home run instead of a double. So different batters will have different results there depending on their power. So that said, um, let's first, before we talk about the two different card designs I'm considering, this is the, of course, the... Um, one that I've been testing and working with. It is a grid-based uh, card design. And I do have a different numerical card design that we'll uh, compare later and, and kind of go over the pros and cons of each. So that, that aside, I want to uh, play a couple of innings here. And this will just be uh, Braves, Dick Rudolph pitching to the Philadelphia Athletics lineup. Uh, again, as a refresher, park adjustments. Uh, if a deep fly eight comes up on the pitcher's card, you will add these numbers, plus two for lefties, plus nine for righties to the deep fly eight rating on the batter's card that possibly turns that into a home run. And conversely, if a home run comes up on the batter's card, you will add the same park adjustments to the pitcher's home run rating on their card as well, whether he uh, keeps it in the park or it goes out. So for Rudolph against lefties, he's one to 20. Shy Park is a plus one. It's not going to change any left-handed batter that hits a home run. It will be a home run. Uh, a bigger adjustment though against right-handed batters, his uh, home run rate is only one to four. So he uh, keeps balls in the park against righties very well. Uh, at Shy Park, that will become a one to eight with a plus four. And that's really the only adjustment uh, park effects that come into play in this game. I wanted to keep it simple. And uh, yeah, and, and I, I agree. And that's kind of what I was looking for, uh, Robert, is um, something that was kind of different than was out there already. I know uh, um, like payoff pitch, there's an actual uh, fatigued card depending on the uh, how the pitcher is rated. Um, inside pitch has results in parentheses that uh, become uh, single ones versus um, no result on the pitcher's card. So what I was kind of looking for here is a balance. And, and, and again, this the number of fatigue squares could change as testing proceeds. But what I was looking here uh, looking for here was a balance that uh, didn't affect the pitchers too severely, but definitely if you rolled certain results, you're taking a chance on uh, giving up hard shots and, and again, having strikeouts turn into walks. So it's kind of the principle I, I wanted to go for there. You know, again, I think pitchers, as they tire, obviously they lose velocity. Uh, sometimes the ball tends to get up in the strike zone, which would um, be attributable to the increased walks as well as the uh, harder hit balls. So that's kind of my uh, thinking um, in terms of uh, the fatigue system for this game there. So let's uh, go ahead and roll a couple of sample innings and we'll go through this slow. Uh, yeah, fall classic. Um, yeah, inside pitch is really, I think they might be even a little too mild on pitchers. Uh, fall classic from videos I've seen uh, takes a much bigger hit. So I'm trying to get a balance there. I want, I want obviously an impact or I want there to be an impact and potential consequence to leaving pitchers in a game when they're fatigued, but not like they're up there uh, doing underhand slow pitch. So, you know, I mean, they still are major league pitchers, so it's not like they're completely going to fall apart when they get, start to get tired. So let's go ahead and roll through an inning here. And uh, I've got the chart handy down here for runner advancement. So we'll go step by step. So again, uh, very similar. We're actually the same system to Glory Days Boxing, if you're familiar with that, with the ring general control. This is the plate control roll. 
and you will review the number of stars that the uh, pitcher and batter have. So six, a one star there for Dick Rudolph. Four would be a uh, two star result for Rube Oldring. So the result is going to come off Rube's card, three and a four. You just cross reference it. And Rube starts the game off with a single to center field. So Oldring is on. And um, uh, we'll come back and show steals later. So First at bat resolved, and most of the uh, at bats will be that easy since there was nobody on the 1D20 does not come into effect there. Second batter up is Cocky Eddie Collins. Rudolph gets a sign, and Rudolph is going to throw another one on his card. And Collins with a blue five, that is going to be his uh, zero. So this is going to come off of Rudolph's card. So again, cross-reference 3-3. Three, three. And 3-3 three, three on Rudolph's card is going to be a fly ball to center field, one down. And runner holds at first base. And again there, uh, since there was no advancement or possible double play, the 1-D-20 does not come into play, the resolution dice. Home run Baker, the batter, lefty-righty matchup. And we're going to get a 3, which is a 3-star on Dick Rudolph's card, and a 2, which is a 2-star for Home Run Baker. So, again, we go to Rudolph's card. And the ratings for these, the star ratings are balanced based on how uh, batters do with their offensive war numbers and pitchers with their ERA+. Plus, and then they're divided into percentages. The top pitchers have the most stars. Uh, there's five different tiers of ratings for both batter and pitcher. So, again, we go to uh, Rudolph's card, and that's a pop fly into foul ground third base. And, again, if he had been fatigued, that would have become a bloop double using the fatigue rating. Obviously, he, there is no fatigue at this point, first inning. So two outs on the F5 for a Baker. And Stuffy McGinnis up now, runner at first base. A one and a three, so one star down to McGinnis, and that's McGinnis's zero column. So six and a two is going to go to uh, Rudolph's card. That's a strikeout, and McGinnis is hard to fan. So that would be the first inning, a hit, and no runs, one left for the Athletics. So we will bypass the bottom half of the inning and go to the second inning for Ru for the A's versus Rudolph. And here I'm just going to go ahead and roll and get the results go a little bit quicker. So that's going to be one start and no stars off of Rudolph's card again at 6 2, and that's another strikeout. So Strunk goes down swinging to start the second inning. Uh, two and a one, and that's four stars on Jack Berry's card. So the result is going to come off the hitter's card this time. And three and a one, that's a single into left field. And the results are weighted a little bit. Um, in favor of the batter when it's off their card and to the pitcher when it's on their card. So it's not an even exactly uh, using Jack Barry. He hit 242. His results will not give you a 242 average. It will give you higher than that, and Rudolph's will be lower to uh, balance out overall. All right, so uh, Barry's on. We're going to go ahead and try to steal. So for steal ratings, uh, the A's, Connie Mack was a big advocate of small ball. His teams always ran a lot, uh, always utilized the sacrifice bunt, hit and run quite a bit. So Jack Berry, he is a jump rating of 10, a steal rating of 11. So that's just going to be a simple two die roll of the uh, – or single roll of the 1D20. So you minus Dick Rudolph's hold rating off his jump, so he needs to get a nine or better. If he does get the jump, he will steal. And Hank Gowdy, the uh, Braves catcher, is a minus one throwing out runners. So his steal rating would be a 10, which basically is a 50-50 proposition. And uh, if you go back and look at stats, Connie Mack's teams did not run. I, it really wasn't very efficient. They usually, as a team, stole between 55 and 60 percent success rate uh, but that was kind of just the, the way baseball was played back then so nine or less for the jump doesn't get it so barry will stay put and with one down that brings up wally shang i want to get to the pitcher's card too so you can see how i've done that i've kind of uh combined all the pitchers onto a single card and uh Again, so that there's not the need. I mean, the print cost of this game, depending on what the final size of the cards are, and these are, you know, fairly 
big cards. I don't know how they show up on the uh, video, but you know, they're not, they're, I'll compare, I'll show you uh, compared to a payoff pitch card. So you see a payoff pitch there. They're about the same height and wider to get all the information on there. So ag again, there, I want to try and keep printing cost minimal if possible by combining pictures onto a single card. So Wally Shang is going to be the batter. And three and a five. So three, that's three stars for the pitcher and two stars for Shang. It comes off Rudolph's card. And three and a five, that is going to be a fly ball. Shang is a switch hitter, so he'll bat as a lefty. Fly out to right field, two down. And I think a couple of the cards stuck together because we haven't faced eight batters yet. But uh, this is the pitcher's card. We'll go ahead and roll with it. So the pitchers, uh, depending on who is pitching, uh, their ratings are all here, and the pitchers have a single plate control bar that they go off of. So the results will vary, uh, single, double, deep, and then if they get the deep result, it tells you what the deep result is, walks, Ks, and then a generic uh, contact out um, grid for the rest of the results there. So here we go, two outs and a four, that's going to be one star, and a six, that's no star, so this comes off Rudolph's card. And here, coming off the pitcher's card will sometimes be a benefit. Uh, as an example, we'll look at um, Chief Bender, not a great hitter, but uh, 10 to 18 are his only chances of uh, success, and probably a little bit better off of Rudolph's card for Chief. So three and a nine there, that's going to be a ground ball down to shortstop, so G6. And if there were less than two outs, just so you know, we haven't used the activator dice yet. If there was less than two outs and runner on first, you would go to the uh, activator and check uh, Bender's double play rating, which would be on his pitcher's card. And I'll, I'll get that here so you can see. So uh, his pitcher's card would be out, obviously, during game play. So you would check uh, double play 1 to 13, and a 2 would be a uh, 6 four, 3 double play if there was uh, less than two outs. So we'll play through one more inning, go back to the top of the order here, and then we'll uh, actually let's do some situational stuff here so that you can see how the charts uh, come into play. So we'll say Rube Oldring singles. He's on at first base. And Eddie Collins, we are just going to roll a single. And again, you'd be rolling all dice at once. So we're going to say uh, Collins takes control against the right-hander, rolls a 3-9, um, which is a single to right field. So we'll just set that scenario up. So there we go, 3-9, single to right field. And then you would roll the 1d20, of course, at the same time, which is a 14. So you would check the run or the chart for the advancement, first to third on single to right field. And the run rating for um, Oldring is an 11. So looking at the chart, and it would be a simple lookup, first to third on single to right field, uh, run rating of 11 to 12. He goes to third on a roll of 1 to 11, stays at second base on a roll of 12 to 18. So he's going to stay put at second base. Hey, Philip, how you doing, buddy? Merry Christmas to you, and thank you. Um, so you'll see here, play. So this is advanced to third, advanced to second, and play. So here, if you roll a uh, 19 to 20 on that check, that means it's going to be a close play at the next base. So what comes into play there is you roll the uh, 1d20 a second time, one of the few times that uh, you would have to do so, and cross-reference his run rating, which again for Oldring is an 11 versus the arm rating of the Braves right fielder, which is a zero. So close play, you'd re-roll the 1d20, 1 to 11, he's safe, 12 to 20, he's out, simple as that. So he is gunned down barely at third base. Now, if there had been uh, two outs, you would add one to the run rating, which would make him a 12, and he would have been safe. Uh, so that's how the adjustments work, and a hit and run would be the same thing. The hit and run is in play. You would add one to the run rating. So in this case, if it was a 
hit and run with two outs and Collins singled, uh, Old Ring's run rating would be 1 to 13 on the close play result and would also be, che would be checked on the same column. Um, so that's basically as simple as advancement is for the uh, batters. And same thing on uh, doubles and triples. You see each field is rated um, for a terrible or a bad, a slow runner. Uh, you'll see a close play only on a roll of 20 for that rating because those runners are not going to try. And for a slow runner going to first to third on a single to the left, you have to roll a one. Uh, two to 19, he stays plus or put, sorry. And 20 would be a close play. And same thing for single uh, second to home on a single and first to home on any double. Uh, for double play ratings, uh, let's do a range play first. Um, we'll just go over this real quick. So here are adjustments to uh, for a hit and run. All runners advance on a ground ball batter out. All run ratings are plus two. So, um, so I actually should have, I'll need to fix that. Uh, all line outs become an automatic double play. And then if the batter misses, uh, basically strikes out, um, it would become a stolen base attempt. If you do try and bunt, bunting, each batter has a run rating. Uh, so on a bunt, you will roll a 1d6, which will tell you who feels it. And then the 1d20 and compare that to the batter's bunt baiting. Eddie Collins, an excellent bunter, bunted a lot. Again, a hallmark of Connie Mack's team. So he is probably going to be successful and not miss it. So five, that is a bunt to the third baseman. And 16, he gets it down successfully, moves the runner along. If he were to miss, uh, he would then have two strikes. And you could try to bunt again. If he missed a second time, it would be a strikeout. And you would have to... Uh, or would actually would not resolve a steal attempt there unless it was a suicide squeeze, but uh, he would miss it and be retired on strikes. Runner would stay put. And then range. So range plays anytime you roll double, double numbers on these two dice. Odd would be an error check, and even would be a range check. So let's go through both of those real quick. So Eddie Collins is up. It's uh, two to two, and Collins is going to be off of his card. He has more stars in the number two. So again, runner on first base, old ring. Four three off of Collins' card, and that becomes a single to center, but uh, doubles, even doubles, is now a range play. So in center field, you would take the range rating of the center fielder, and the Braves' center fielder is an 11. And you would reference that against the 1D20. 14, that is unsuccessful. So that's going to fall for a hit. And the range play will then give, or the range chart will then give you a uh, little bit of commentary and some flavor there. So outfield range check on a hit. Again, that roll is 14. Failed range check. Uh, can't run down, looping fly, single runners advance two bases. So the wording on the chart would replace uh, what was on the card there. So that's, his, uh, that's how you resolve range checks. Air checks are the same way. So we'll say we roll double threes. And uh, let's go actually double fives. So the result will come off of uh, Rudolph's card here. So potential error check in a two and a three, and that is going to be a error check on a single. Uh, and I want to do an out, so we'll make it a two to five. So that is an infield fly, uh, fly ball to the first baseman. And Braves first baseman is a six. Eight is above a six, so that is a successful uh, error check. And again there, you will check here. Um, infield fly ball error, and the result is one to eight. Uh, failed error check, misjudge ball goes off glove, batter safe, runners advance one, and successful error check, caught runners hold. So that's uh, how error checks are resolved. And again, you could resolve it all on a single die roll, or you could roll the 1D20 a second time to get some diversity in the results here. But I've, I've formulated the chart in a way that um, – it plays out basically as it should uh, fairly re well, realistically uh, according to the situation by just using a single role. So that's just going to be user preference. So 
Uh, let's check out the chat. Hey, Wesley, welcome, buddy. Yeah, it's 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 been a long time, and it's still going to be quite a long time. So, but appreciate the comments. Uh, you know, I want to get to the point um, at some point by mid uh, 2021 where I can get recruit some people to do some beta testing and get uh, some a variety of teams from different seasons out there. Um, I actually did send that to you. Uh, I'll I'll go ahead and, and email it again. It might have gone to your uh, your spam folder. Uh, but I, I'll make sure I'll, I'll definitely will make sure you get that my friend. So, all right. So that is a uh, quick overview of how things are with the gameplay. Uh, we've talked about the, the pitcher fatigue edition. So let's talk about differences in cards. And I'm, I'm just looking at this for two reasons, one for ease of play and a second for ease of design. So these are the current uh, pitcher and batter's cards, grid-based. And then I've got a couple of more modern players um, from current teams, Josh Hader and uh, Aaron Judge. So you can see the pros and cons of each design and First of all, you'll notice, don't mind the fact that I spelled Hater's name wrong on this. It's, again, just test cards. So what I've done with this design is go to a numerical formula. And instead of, um, instead of adapting uh, numbers to results on a card, what I've done, these are pre- I guess pre-numbered cards, 10 to 30 will, or 10 to 39 will always be in the first column. 40 to 55 always will be in the second and 56 to 69 always the third, which is also the uh, split columns where there are differential, where there's differentials between uh, righty and lefty results for pitcher and batter. So the purpose of doing this uh, pros and cons to each, first of all, in my opinion, and I'll obviously weigh in if uh, you feel differently. But the grid uh, definitely gives you more variety. You never know what's going to come up. Uh, certain numbers will not tip you off to what the result will be if you're doing a straight numerical sequence. Now, you see here, I've done a little bit of that on these cards too. The results are still not, you know, hits, then outs, then walks, and strikeouts. They're still mixed up. But uh, strikeouts, a lot of strikeouts will be in the first column. So when you roll a one, you know there's a higher percentage of that. Um, hits are mixed up um, standardly in column two. They can be in column one, two. And then split results, in some cases, like with Hader's card, most of his hits are in column three because he's just such a dominating pitcher in terms of contact. And right-handers tend to... Uh, single or hit more singles against him where lefties when they do get a hit will uh, hit the ball a little bit harder so let's talk about um let's see robert uh so the grid design has an yeah exactly so and that's kind of where i got the inspiration for the grid um inside pitch and also replay baseball uh but I, I like the different, the different, uh, or the variety, and the fact that you just can't determine what the results will be on inside pitch. Um, and the column design, it's kind of a, uh, a hodgepodge of different uh, formats. Um, you know, still incorporating the splits, but um, giving a small, I guess, small sample in terms of number range for each result. And then it's just fitting in the results to make the card. And, and, you know, I'll have to tweak those a little bit. You'll see here on 30 to 33 on Hater, uh, it's a strikeout. 30 to 34 on Judge is a walk. I had to tweak those two, or, um, yeah, tweak those two numbers a little bit to get the uh, results to all fix, or fit, sorry. But uh, there won't be any really change to the uh, range numbers in each column. It'll always be, like I said, 10 to 39. 40 to 55 and 56 to 69. So <clears throat> from a design standpoint, this is easier for me because I have the cards pre-formatted and it's less time manually plugging in results. On the grid uh, format, I have to manually paste in every single result on here. So that's, you know, and again, I mean, it's not like it's, it's uh, backbreaking work, but you're posting in 60 different uh, results here 
to get the variety on the grid card uh, versus on this card basically uh, putting in 30. So it's, I guess, half the amount of work. And the, the other thing to me as a player that's um, more favorable to this design is you can look at a card here and determine how good a pitcher is. Look at, look at Hayter's card as an example. So if you were looking at him in grid format, you kind of, you, there'd still be a ton of K's, but you'd have to kind of scope to find them. Here, most of his K's are together, and you can see what a dominating strikeout pitcher he is. Um, Hayter also gives up, has a propensity to give up a long ball uh, at a higher rate, especially surprisingly against lefties and other pitchers. So most pitchers will have a uh, deep fly eight result. Hader has a two range deep fly eight result on his card where you would check the batter's deep fly uh, result to see if it was a home run or indeed just a deep fly out. Hader actually has two pure home runs which uh, if you roll these and it, they both of them come against uh, left-handed batters, 60 to 61, uh, it's an automatic home run. So that's kind of a pro from a, uh, I guess, player's perspective. You can look at this card and say, Jesus, uh, Hater is a dominating strikeout pitcher. I don't see very many hits at all here. There's a double. Um, it's pretty much it. So when you get the result on his card, uh, it's going to be tough for a batter to get on. But when you start getting over here in the uh, split columns, uh, you see a couple of automatic home runs and some hits for right-handers. And then, of course, uh, triple here for a lefty. So that's, I, I guess that's kind of the, um, my, my view of the pros and cons for each design. But definitely, uh, you know, that's something that um, I'm going to be taking feedback on. And I'll go... Ease of, ease of design will factor into it somewhat. Um, if it's close, just say as an example, if half the people say we like this, half this, I would go with this because it's going to be easier for me as a designer. If it was 90% of the people like the grid and 10% like this, well, I'm not going to go with this because, okay, I asked your opinion. Nine out of 10 said you like this. And I said, okay, I'm still going to do this. So, yeah, it's definitely open. And let's... Uh, Let's check up on the chat. Hey, what's up, Tony? Welcome, buddy. Just going over some things. Uh, keep base running clean. Very critical. Don't sabotage. Yeah. No, I, I don't know if you um, and Robert prefer the grid. Thank you. And grid. Grid is the font actually is the same size. And, and you know, again, I showed it earlier before you got here, Tony. These cards are actually bigger than uh, payoff pitch cards, but the Payoff pitch font is quite a bit bigger. I'll move this card a little closer. So the fonts on both cards are the same. So this would be how the uh, batter's card would look if you're looking down on it. Um, and, and I think just by design itself, because the grid is enclosed and here it's more open, that tends to make the uh, column results look a little bigger as well. But yeah, they are the exact same font. Um, Hey, Mike, welcome, buddy. So you like uh, this side here? I guess it would be my left, uh, which is the column result. And you still have you still have the fatigue again here. And, and we talked about Aaron Judge. So here, if uh, he rolls off of his card, a G3 and a G5, oh, that would be an automatic single if the pitcher is fat uh, fatigued. If he rolled an F7, uh, that would become a home run because Judge obviously is a power hitter. And then uh, three possible strikeouts here, um, 16, actually four, I'm sorry, 16 to 19 become walks if you roll there on a pitcher's tire. So let's do a uh, uh, grid can give a lot more type. Or type. You know what's funny, though? Um, that's, that's the other thing, Robert. The results here, because they're single result, the actual number of results in terms of um, plays are the same for both. Uh, the only difference here is you'll see them in one place most of the time, uh, like the single to right field will always be here, where on the grid you could have a two single to right field grids. So in, in that sense, yeah, there would be more results here because they're all split up as an individual cell, uh, but the same range or array of results are on both cards, uh, exactly the same just by range. Um, 
And Tony, I don't hate grids, but it's not the end. I'll call it like the Strat cards are. Yes. Well, I think still with the Strat cards too, some of that is the coloring uh, that they put on those cards. Uh, Wesley, as a player, seems to me that I prefer the grid because it seems like more results are should be more widely. And, and that's a good point too. Um, you know, again, same amount, but you're only going to get them in one place on the columns. Well, one or two strikeouts, for example, on judges take uh, – three different columns because he strikes out a lot and he's got a uh, home run uh, here in a couple of individual columns versus righty. This is for all batters uh, 13 to 15 on his card and then 54 as well. So yeah, they're going to be definitely more distributed on the grid because each grid is individual. So, um, you know, it comes down to play style and preference. And again, I'm going to be taking, you know, I'll definitely take that feedback into consideration. And if there's definitely uh, the community leans one way or another, that's what I'm going to go with. Because it's uh, so like I say with, with Glory Days Boxing, once you purchase the game, it's your game, not mine. So it should be something that you want to play. And it's kind of how I look to design it. So I'm going to do a couple of, um, yeah, and, you know, that's true too, Tony. There are a lot of different uh, ways to skin a cat, so to speak. It, it's just, to me, it, it's, it's first of all ease of play second of all um is there a variety in the play like you know like i said earlier if you roll a 18 and i'll use uh, status pro as an example if you flip an 18 on the fast action card you know no matter what card it's coming off of it's some type of hit unless it's like mario mendoza if you roll a 1-8 on these cards you don't know what's going to be there it's going to be different on every batter so uh, Wesley, I prefer game mechanics that allow weaker players to occasionally outplay a stronger player. Uh, grid, grid does accomplish that, but I think, and I'm glad you brought that up. What really is going to bring that into play, uh, Wesley, is the play control factor. So the way this is weighted, again, pitchers, pitchers are one, three, or five stars. Batters are zero, two, or four, but it's weighted in a way so that, uh, like, Rudolph is a, he's a second tier pitcher, the second best you can get in terms of number of stars. He still has three, I'm sorry, four one-star columns. Uh, this could be the worst batter and he would only have a couple of um, two-star columns and then uh, zeros. And I'll use the pitcher's batting card to demonstrate that. So here, here pitcher's batting card is weak as it gets. So two stars, they still have the opportunity to take the result onto their card, which is weighted more heavily in the uh, batter's favor um, against four of the results off of Rudolph's card if they get a three or a five. So that's, that's kind of where the, uh, what you mentioned is going to come into play where a weaker hitter can sometimes go nuts and he rolls, you know, his best star result on every at bat and the pitcher rolls their worst. So he has control and has a chance to uh, um, get the result there. So Glenn, Hey, welcome buddy. Thanks for joining. So on the column card are the die roll numbers always in the same? Yeah, exactly. Um, the, these will always be, and you'll see on these two cards, 10, 11, 12, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 13, 15, 16, 19, et cetera. So the range is always the same. The only deviant or deviation here is on Judge's card, I had to give him an extra number for a walk. And um, so change that to 30 to 34 instead of 30 to 33. And this result here, this single, is only two digits where on haters – uh, 34 to 36 is three for that strikeout result. So yeah, those, the ranges will always be the same. Mendoza is my cousin. I used to hit like Mendoza when I played too. Uh, more power though. So that's really it. I'm going to roll a couple of at bats. We went through, uh, three innings off the grid card. I'm going to roll, and I don't have a team of these printed yet. I'm just, this is a design I just started playing around with yesterday, but I'm going to roll, um, some results off of uh, the column cards, just with these two, and show two things. Obviously, how it works here and how it differs in terms of dead ball players versus modern players in the uh, strikeout fest we call modern baseball. So two and a three, Hater, that is three stars on his card, and going down to Judge's card, that's a zero. It's coming off a of Hater's card. 
uh, three, or I'm sorry, 36. We know that uh, everything under 39 is in this column, and there's that strikeout result. So first time Judge faces him, he goes down swinging. Second time up, three stars again for Hader, and this time a four two stars for Judge coming off a of Hader's card again. 61, we know that's going to be in this column, and against a lefty, that would have been gone, but Judge is going to fight that off and single it in the center field, so Judge is one for two, strike out a single. Uh, next time up, six, three stars for Hader again, and a two off of Judge's card, and four stars for Judge, that is one of his two good columns. So a 49 off a judge's card coming in the second column. 49 is going to be a fly out to center field. So one for three for judge. We'll do five at bats. Uh, six and a two. Again, Hader rolling good. Three stars, but judge is powerful again on the uh, four-star result. And the result is a 14 and 14. And judge gets a hold of a Hader fastball and drives it into the second deck in Yankee Stadium. So two for four, a single, a home run, and a strikeout for Judge against Josh Hader. And Hader once again has a three and five. That's a two. We're going back to Hader's card, 58. We know that's going to come in the third column. And against the right-hander, Judge is going to draw the base on balls. So that's basically it. Um, so you, you see, you know, I, I to me, I think the columns plays a little bit quicker. I mean, once you get in the swing of the game, it, it's not really going to matter. But um, – that's kind of just a, a sample of each uh, card. So Judge ends up two for four against Hater, a strikeout, a homer, and a walk. So, and again, that's kind of the difference too between modern baseball and obviously dead ball, the number of strikeouts and long balls. So anything else anyone wants to see, maybe roll a uh, another quick inning with the grid for those of you that may have joined later. Um, I can do that. And Tony, you were talking about base running too, but um, I'm going to get shy of the park back out here. So base running and uh, you'll, you'll see how this works. If we get a runner on Tony um, again, the base running chart is, it's all done on a single roll of all five dice. So if there's runners on, you will go straight to this uh, base running chart here and reference the uh, run rating of the runner on base versus uh, the 1D20 roll down here. And that will tell you, again, using uh, first to third on a single center, whether he goes to third, whether he goes to second, or whether there's going to be a close play at the bag. So... Uh, We'll do another inning here before we uh, call it a stream. And uh, again, for those of you that joined late, you can see how hopefully the base running works. So Dick Rudolph facing Eddie Murphy for the A's. We are underway. And it's going to be five stars for Rudolph. I know automatically highest batters go is four, so I don't have to even check. We're going straight to uh, his card. 2-1, going to be a ground ball down to shortstop. One down. Rube Oldring is the batter and the left fielder. Uh, six, or I'm sorry, four, uh, four. So this is going to be a range play, double fours, and it's going to go, come off of uh, Oldring's card. Six and a four, and that's going to be a ground ball down to shortstop. And Rabbit Moranville for the Braves is a 12. So you would have just left that one die, that one D20 there. He would have got to it and made the play and battery tire. All right, two down, Eddie Collins, a batter, and double five. So we get an error check now, and it's going to come off of Rudolph's card. A six and a nine, and six nine is going to be against the lefty ground ball, the second base. And Johnny Evers is the brave second baseman, has an error rating of nine, and a two is going to be an error. So at that point, I would go to the failed error check on a ground ball chart. And uh, right here, infield ground ball error check two. Bad throw in the dirt, batter safe, runners advance one. And you see the asterisk there, if hit to first baseman, first baseman boots, ball scores, and E3, all runners advance one. So that's basically how simple it is to uh, resolve base running error. So Collins is on at first base, and Collins is actually going to try and steal. 
So we'll uh, go through that process. First, you try and get the jump. He has a jump rating of 13 minus one for Rudolph's hold. Two, he gets the jump and a steal rating of 13 minus one for Hank Gowdy's arm. So one to 12, here comes the throw. Colin slides head first and safe at second base, two down. So now we're going to add one to Colin's run rating if the, uh, there is a hit here. Homer and Baker, the batter. Lefty righty matchup, two down, runner on second base. Uh, five and a three coming off of Rudolph's card and 33. That is going to be a fly ball into shallow center field. Coming in to take that easily is Connolly and side is retired. So that is another inning uh, playthrough of the game on the column card. Hey, Alan, what's up, buddy? Merry Christmas uh, across the pond there. So that's really it. So before we end the stream, uh, any questions uh, for anyone? Questions, comments, uh, criticisms, any feedback is welcome. Like I said, you know, this, this is still a long process before this game is released. A lot of testing, a lot of uh, rating to go. Um, but ultimately, I want, when the game is finished, I want it to be uh, something that the uh, community that is going to play the game has a say in for sure. Oh, one other question too. Um, on the difference in the cards, columns and grid. And again, if, if you have a preference, columns or grids, leave that in the chat or comments. Uh, but also in where we put the plate control star ratings uh, as a player, is it easier to see them under the numbers? like uh, they are on the column cards or above the numbers and separated from the results by the rolls as it is on the grid cards. What are, uh, what are thoughts there? <laughs> when the time is right, Robert, I'd be happy to. Um, cool. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. Like I said, uh, when that time comes early next year, we are going to need some testers for sure. So Robert uh, Allen likes the grid cards on the right. And again, I'm going by my right. I hope that's the same on your screen. And uh, all right. So both uh, Robert and Glenn above and, and guys, does it matter what you'd like that in regardless of what the uh, final card design is then? And 86 season, uh, Mets. So, you know, one thing, and again, one thing I do like about the uh, plate control ratings above, obviously, it separates them. And, and once you get your eyes trained where to look, it, you get the results fairly quicker, and they do kind of get lost down here. Um, any thoughts on the fatigue system? This is the first time I have shown the fatigue system. And if you're late, again, to recap that, um, based on it's based on individual batters. So when they pitcher, in, in Josh Hader's case, and these aren't his numbers, this, these are, again, this is a test card. So Josh Hader, say he has a relief rating of uh, nine, which his is going to be lower. But when he faces that number of batters, he'll become fatigued. And then any card or any role on any card that is uh, highlighted, um, either on the pitcher or the batter, his aren't highlighted, but uh, the, the grid cards will show you that. So these are the highlighted numbers. Whenever you roll a highlighted result with a fatigue pitcher, you go to the uh, batter's card, the tired line. Ground outs become singles, runners advance maximum. Fly outs in Murphy's case, double maximum advance, and Ks become walks. In judge, same thing, except flyouts become home runs because he's got some pop, and he's going to take that high, slow, fastball deep. And he's going to get a few more walks because he has more Ks. So um, the, the baseline, too, on that is for uh, contact hits to outs, four uh, off of each card, and for strikeouts, depending on the error, era, uh, two to four off of each card, they're turning strikeouts into walks. So um, that's the ratio currently. So there's either going to be um, uh, six fatigued differences or eight. And, and again, their testing is going to determine what the correct ratio is there. Uh, Alan, so the fatigue results are pairs. Um, 
they well no they'd be uh they're they're uh, reference just for outs but they could be any number of different outs so it wouldn't necessarily if you're asking a, on the 1d6 they don't come into play the 1d6 or if there's doubles there it's a range or an error check but for pairs here um basically there'll be two strike two to four strikeouts and then four um, contact outs, uh, which will result in hits if the pitcher's fatigued, if that's what you're asking. So yeah, they, and they don't, they don't have to be paired on both cards. If you roll a fatigue, um, number on either pitcher or batter, you go straight to the batter's tired line and apply the result off of his card. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they they would be, yeah, I got what you're saying. Yeah. So there'd be, there's only three. So it's either going to be ground out, fly out or strike out. Uh, and that's all going to be the same on the fatigue lines. Um, it'll either be ground outs will always be a single maximum advance and fly outs, depending on the batter will always be a double max advance or a home run. And then of course, K's will always be walks. So the tired line will always be the same. Yes, that's correct. Alan. Correct. Uh, Tony, it works when not every bit, whoops, when not every bit becomes a computation challenge. Sometimes a guy stops at second base, other times he goes to third, but on certain occasions you calculate, which is fine. Yeah, it's, um, and I think, I think the way that, uh, advancement is, is programmed in with this chart or factored in will make it fairly simple. And I, I spent, a lot of time researching the percentages runners advance depending on where the ball is hit and, and uh, whether it's a single or double and where the base runner is to try and get it as dialed in as possible for the average runner, which for this game would pretty much be in the 10 to 12 range. Um, this 10 on the low end of average, uh, 11 to 12 on the high end. So the percentages are based basically on an 11 rated runner. Uh, on each hit type to each field. And then the faster the runner, the odds go up and slower they go down, of course, to still get to that balance to where overall I'd still be in the same percentage range, uh, which is, I think, 40 or 39, 39, 39% first to third on a, on a base hit to center field. So, yeah. Um, need to do a screen record on the card. Hey, Jay, thanks for, uh, thank you very much, Hey Joseph. Thanks for joining. Um, well, I'm not sure. What do you mean on uh, a screen, uh, screen record, Tony? Make the, or screen, make the, the card bigger so it can be seen. Uh, Alan Shaw, so the first two say gray text, next two lighter shade, last pair lighter shade, so you can easily see the pairs. Um, they're going to be a single shade, actually. I mean, they're, they're going to be they're going to be the same on the cards uh, to reference that fatigue line. The grays come into different, just cut to make other results pop. But the uh, the coloration on the cards will be the same, and I can change that too. This is kind of a dirty gold, I guess, a, a light bronze color to so show fatigue. I can make it yellow. I can make it uh, a fluorescent green, whatever's going to be easiest to play with. Hey, Rob, what's up, buddy? Merry Christmas. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'll um, I'll do I'll do something where I uh, get the cards in. You know, and I, I've got old man eyes, too. Uh, I've got my glasses on right now. And I, I can still read these. I'm roughly, uh, oh, about a foot and a half, two feet away from the cards. And I can still see them clearly here. So I, I think it just may be how I'm fitting them into the screen. But um, like I said, bringing closer. Oops, there we go. You can see, so that that's kind of how it would look, you know, if you've got it on the table in front of you. So, and again, I do think the columns pop a little better. The, the grid makes the uh, results look smaller, even though the font's the exact same, but you can see in a side by side. It's, geez, this is weird going backwards. <laughs> so yeah, side by side. You can see the fonts the same. And, and there, you know, the grid's going to show up a little better, but the grid does look smaller from a distance. I will agree with that for sure.
Okay. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll, I'll put, I, okay. Gotcha. Exactly. I'll go ahead and do something like that and um, go through and actually we can do that now. Let me find something to elevate them a little bit. And, and that's actually one thing I haven't done in this video is kind of go over the parameters of the card. So we'll, we'll use these two guys. Hater and judge. That gets them a little bit closer for you. So going over the card design. And again, this is a column format. So the pictures, the ratings will have stats are very basic. And again, due to space constraints. Uh, and this, these are not haters, actual numbers. I just, again, put his results here as a test. These are judges. So game plays, his uh, basic stat line, average home runs, uh, ribbies, uh, jump, steal, bunt, run, injury rating, if you uh, incorporate that, double play rating. So whenever you roll a ground ball and there's a runner on base less than two outs, you will reference the 1D20 against the batter's double play rating and adjust it if there's a hit and run on, of course. But uh, so 11 or less, it's a double play, 12 to 17 fielder's choice and 18 to 20 batter out runner advances. Sack fly rating, uh, this is for a runner on third. So a 14 on a fly out for judge gets the runner from third home. If you're trying to advance second to third on a fly ball, you would cut this in half. And then arm rating in the outfield, and then the deep fly rating. So when a deep fly eight result comes up on the pitcher's card, uh, you will reference the 1D20 against uh, the batter's results. Judge will always turn that deep fly to a home run against righties and half the time against lefties. And then uh, the defensive ratings. This is one thing I'm kind of struggling with, um, especially with players that play multiple positions. I do not have a lot of room to uh, put multiple positions in here, like a guy that utility guy that plays five different positions. Um, so I'd have to go generic to get it to fit. And that's, uh, again, a struggle, but I don't really have any other place I could put it on the card without taking away something I need. So um, position, range rating, and error rating. And then, uh, of course, the plate control, which is the same as Glory Days Boxing, ring general roll, uh, one to six, blue, red. And pitchers are rated, again, one, three, or five stars. Batters are rated zero, two, or four. Pitchers do have a slight advantage, but batters can uh, take control if they uh, have a hot streak and pitchers are cold rolling the sixes. Um, that tells you whoever wins that goes off their card. Batters cards are weighted more heavily in their favor offensively. Um, strikeouts and walks are reduced a little bit on the batter's card. They're increased on the pitcher's card. And hits are reduced on the pitcher's card where they're increased on the batter's card. So that's a basic concept of the design. Uh, some specific things. We've talked a ton about fatigue. Uh, wild rating. On the pitcher's card, if you roll a 10 and there's runners on base, you would reference the 1D20 against the wild result. And Hater is he's pretty solid. Um, we'll just throw a couple of grid cards up there now. So here's Bill James from the Miracle Braves. And Eddie Collins. So James, if you roll that wild result, which is um, – on the grid card, it's a 6-0. You'd reference the 1D20 if there's runners on base. 1-4 to four walk. Balk is 5. And hit by pitch, 6-13. to 13. Uh, The catchers also have a pass ball rating, which is 20 or 19 and 20. And if 19 or 20 comes up on a wild check, you would go off of their card and it would be a pass ball. Or some catchers have no pass ball rating. Um, again, the 2D6 uh, six, six rolls. Two odds become an error check on whatever the result is, uh, hit or an out, and two uh, even doubles become a range check on whatever the result is, again, hit or an out. Uh, of course, exceptions to both those rules would be walks and strikeouts. Um, other specific results here, uh, of course, we have the event chart, uh, which uh, very similar to Glory Days Boxing, unusual crazy plays, and also weather and injuries. 
Um, on line outs, there is a 20 in parentheses. What that means is anytime you roll a line out and the 1D20 is a or one. 1d20 is a 20 with runners on base automatic double play and in terms of design and mechanics that's pretty much it the other thing on the pitcher's card if a batter rolls a home run and collins um he hit two home runs in 1914 so he doesn't have any natural home runs on his card he has to rely on a pitcher uh, rolling a deep fly eight to have a chance to get a home run and only then against right handers. But if he did have a home run, um, you would check the pitcher's card to see if he was able to keep it in the park. And again, that's modified by the ballpark ratings. So hopefully that gives you a little bit better look at the cards. Um, Tony, IDJ, welcome, buddy. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let me catch up on the chat. Uh, is that Rob? Is is Formula D the new game you got? I saw the video. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Uh, what my dogs about there? It's isn't it cold. My sister, as you know, Alan. A lot of my family still lives in England, as I was born there. And my sister said she actually got snow. She's up in a uh, in uh, Ferry Hill County, Durham. Um, hey, Merry Christmas, Rob. Thanks for stopping by, Bud. And Anthony, you're not, what you think your game is going to do so well? <laughs> I wish and I could just retire and sit on a beach, right? Uh, Strat yeah, I know IDJ is a big Stratomatic fan. He can probably chime in on that. Um, oh, I got you. Yeah, I can do that. So, Tony, I've got um, I've got uh, these on a PDF or not a PDF on Excel. So I'll just uh, use OBS and I can't do live on that. I'm having issues with my OBS live, but uh, I'll do, I'll do a uh, recorded video on that on OBS and, and go through that where you can see them up close and personal. Uh, like you uh, requested there. And a hey, thanks IDG on the look of the cards. Uh, I know you still like strap better, but. And doubled off. Yeah. Okay. So you are, so you're kind of close. Up. I, I've got a relative in uh, Newton I cliff. Um, so yeah, you're, you're up that way. Awesome. My, yeah, my, my uh, siblings and relatives are scattered mostly around uh, Darlington is probably the closest big city to most of them and uh, down towards Newcastle as well. So, um, all right, now I can go through that real quick for you, IDJ. So we'll just say, um, we'll use a good base runner. So uh, Eddie Collins, steals are pretty simple. It's one, two 1D 20 year olds. And that's again, one of the few times you'd have to roll um, more than just a single handful of dice. So you'd reference the jump rating. It's, it's pretty standard. This is something standard used in a lot of tabletop baseball games. Jump rating minus uh, hold rating. So minus one there. Uh, jump of 12 or under. He does not get the jump there. We'll try again. Gets the jump there. And then references steel rating against the catcher's arm rating and Hank Gowdy for the Braves is a minus one. So one to 12 and he is just in there under the tag. So that's how stolen bases result. Simple as that. If you don't get a jump, you do not get to steal. So anything else anybody wants to see or has questions on before we end the stream? And again, there is the difference between the two cards designs that I'm considering grid versus column. And thus far, it looks like the feedback has been slightly uh, favoring the grid, which, um, you know, again, for me, it doesn't matter. Um, the columns are a little bit easier from a design perspective, but not a ton. And ultimately, it's going to be what uh, is preferred within the community. So. All right, so no more questions. Uh, we will wrap it up. Appreciate everyone joining us. Um, Matt Steeler fan 1933 RGL 518. Check out his channel. He is the Payoff Pitch Master. That's Robert. Uh, has multiple play, and I, I've got. I'm going to get in a 1921 uh, Babe Ruth replay. Philip, 
Um, I know you got a new channel up. Wesley, thanks for joining us. So give Philip a sub. And Tony from Cards and Dice TV, per currently playing Fall Classic Baseball, which has me intrigued. And appreciate you stopping by. He does a great job. Mike Martin, thank you. And uh, I vote for the uh, column format there. Uh, Glenn Bonesteel, uh, thank you very much for stopping by. And do you have a preference on design, column, or uh, grid? And Alan Shaw, my buddy from across the pond. Cheerio, mate. And Merry Christmas to you and yours. And make sure I got everybody. Uh, a. Joseph, thank you also for stopping by and the kind words. Rob, my buddy, enjoy your uh, excursion with the wife, and we'll catch up with you later. And, of course, IDJ, who has gotten uh, also uh, got some gotten back into baseball, has uh, uh, season ticket uh, overviews up, and season ticket by uh, Cray Dressclaw. Uh, who you'll know from uh, Baseball Mogul is a tabletop design he's been working on, and it's it's very intriguing. Uh, I know he's still in the beta process there, but he's got a very good design, and it's very interested as well. Uh, Phil, okay, so no, great, thanks, Glenn. Um, yeah, so again, it's it's pretty close, slight preference to grid. So we'll we'll you know that will be something that plays out over the course of development, and when I get ready to start. Um, rating more teams for beta testing, I will definitely make a decision and revisit this and possibly do a, uh, a vote or a poll to uh, get the final decision from the community. Um, Philip, this, it's going to be a while, bud. Uh, it's, I, I want, I want this to be right. And, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of testing that still has to take place. And the main thing with baseball games is rating seasons takes so long, especially more current seasons. So I want to have four or five seasons in the can when the game is released. So there's at least some variety there versus release it with only a season or two. Then I'm trying to churn out seasons, which uh, probably seasons will probably take um, three or four months to completely rate, especially the more current ones. So uh, beta testing at some point in 2021 and full game design, I would say in 2022, if things go well. No DH allowed. <laughs> The company with no seasons. <laughs> you know, the, the other thing I'm wrestling with too is what to cap the um, the number of players at per team. And for costs, the optimum there is probably 30. But we know with modern seasons, uh, that doesn't even come close. I mean, shit, teams last year used 30 pitchers, some of them. So... I know for the replay, uh, the replay buffs that it's a must to have every player that played carded. Um, so I, I have a decision to make there too. Do I cap printed cards at a certain number, 30, 40, and then make uh, PDFs available for fringe players? That's, that's an option that I think a lot of cards do or a lot of companies do. Um, Joe with payoff pitch is he, he cards every single player, which is totally amazing. Um, and shout out to him too, sidelinestrategy.com. Check out Payoff Pitch. Uh, you can also get Glory Days Boxing there. And, and shout out to him for the fact that I'm creating a baseball game that I actually was going to stop working on because of my association with him with Glory Days Boxing. And he said, no, uh, he'd be more than happy to sell the baseball game too. There's a lot out there and it's different than payoff pitch. So he has no problem carrying that, which I think is extremely cool and, and very, uh, very, very classy. And Joe Bryan, if you have not interacted with him or had the chance to, is an amazing guy. Uh, great customer service. Great guy. Uh, so IDJ wants 1911. Alan Shaw says 1986 and 2011. Um, and good set, good set of cards, cards. So yeah, so yeah, I DJ, I got 1911 down for you, buddy. I know you're a big dead ball fan and, uh, 
that will be in the hopper. Actually, the one dead ball season I'll probably do first since I'm working on it now is, of course, 1914. And I want to do 1908 and then some more uh, 70s and 80s seasons to begin with. Uh, with the first release, I actually probably will not have the most current season. I'll start that after the game releases. Um, so definitely any season that you like from the 80s, 70s, or 90s that uh, – are kind of underrepresented, let me know, and I will definitely consider those. Um, so Alan Shaw confirming IDJ does want 1911. All right, got you. Um, 1911 IDJ, I got it, buddy. And obviously I'm giving him a hard time. He hates dead ball. <laughs> so, hey, but thanks everyone for joining. I appreciate the feedback. And uh, on your way through the turnstiles, if you don't mind, drop a like and uh, – we will have further development diaries as it comes. Um, at this point in time, I'm not going to be working on the baseball game uh, any further until I get the Glory Days Boxing Featherweight set done, which is projected and on target for an end of January 2021 release. And then uh, got um, flyweights to rate. And after the featherweights come out, I'll revisit the game and do some more uh, update vlogs on the game as well on the baseball game. So, all right. Hopefully you all have a very Merry Christmas and all the best to you and yours. Anthony with Bleacher Bums Gaming. Until next time, keep rolling for the fences and we'll see you.